In this exercise, we are going to learn more about ionics modals and forms. Now, although modals and forms are two separate things, combining them together on a mobile device makes it a lot more easier to construct forms. Modals in ionic cover the entire screen when you bring them up. So that is one thing that we need to keep in mind. Unlike models that we used with Bootstrap in the earlier course. In Bootstrap, you saw that the model occupies only a certain part of the screen and you can even define the size of the model. In Ionic's case, the model covers the entire screen. So this is something that we need to keep in mind when we use models in Ionic. Forms, on the other hand, enable you to seek user's input. Ionic forms are similar to the forms that we saw in Bootstrap. We have a lot of the support that we have seen for forms in Bootstrap also in Ionic, but Ionic has its own way of specifying the inputs and the labels for forms. This is what we will explore in this exercise. The Confusion Ionic app that we have already scaffolded earlier already includes a model and some form elements in the model. Let's examine that first in order to understand how Ionic supports forms and models. To help us to bring up the Ionic model, let's um, click on the navigation and you see that we have this login model already included in Ionic. So when you click on the login option in the menu, you see the login model come up on the screen and then cover the entire screen. This model includes two input fields for the username and password. And also you can see that it has a header which contains a title and also a button here which enables you to close the login model. So when you click on the close button, the login model closes. So bringing up the login model one more time, um, we will be able to type in our information here. And then when you click on the login, then the form information is submitted and has to be handled in the controller that controls the um, display and the hiding of this mode, as we will learn more next. So when you click on the login uh, button, then the login model will be dismissed. And if you have the server side configured, then the login information needs to be processed on the server side. Currently, we don't have the server side set up for processing user uh, login information. So we are simulating this behavior using a short timeout that we configure in the controller, as you will see next. Now, let's go and examine how we construct this login model. Constructing a model involves two parts. One, you need to design the template that defines the model structure. Then you need to configure the showing and hiding of the models through appropriate functions that you define in the controller for this particular application. Let's now quickly examine the template file for the login model. So as you saw in the login model, it had a header which contained a title and a button. And also it contained the form elements, which included the username and password input fields and a button which when clicked will trigger the submission of the forms. So looking at the template here, I have the template displayed in brackets here. So this template is defined in Ionic as an HTML template. So here you can see that this template is defined using an ion model view. So we saw the use of ion view for creating ionic templates earlier. For a model, we use the ion model template, ion model view uh, for this case. So in this case, the ion model view encloses the template definition for this model. Now, looking at more details of this model, you can see that there is an ion header bar. The header bar obviously defines the header of this model, which contains the title and the close button. And then you have the ion content, 
which contains the actual content of this model. So inside the content, we define a form that contains the various form elements. Let's examine the header first, and then we will examine the content later. Now, looking back at the ion header bar, you see that the ion header bar contains in H1 with the class title, and this is what is used to specify the title to be displayed in our model. In addition, you can see the use of a div with the class buttons, and then inside that there is a button being displayed here. So in this case, the button uh, is displayed here using the button HTML uh, tag with the class button, button clear, and then also specifying the ng click as close login and the button's uh, name specified as but our button text specified as close. So obviously, from this definition, you can immediately surmise that the closed login function needs to be implemented in the controller for this particular um, application. We will see that in more detail when we visit the JavaScript support for the model in a short while. So that is what is contained in the header bar, the title and the button. So this is how you specify the title and the buttons in Ionic. Now, let's look at the content. Inside the content, you can see that the ion content tag contains the form elements. So inside the form, you see that there is an ng submit do login. So obviously, the do login function needs to be implemented in the controller. So we already see that two functions, close login and do login, need to be implemented in the controller. Now, inside this form, you see the use of a div with the class list. So my form elements are going to be displayed as a set of list items here. Now, in where you can see that I have the first label with the class item, item input. This is the label that defines the username part of the form. So inside there, you can see that I have a span with the class input label and with the uh, name username there. And then an input type here, which is tied to the ng model of login data username. So obviously, this implies that there must be a login data JavaScript variable in my controller. And uh, this um, JavaScript object should contain a username property in there, which is tied in through the two-way data binding to this input here. Then the second item in my form is the label uh, also, again, defined using the item item input. So this is a, a, a list item in the uh, div list that I have defined earlier. It contains the input label as password and the input type below as password and the ng model tied into the login data dot password property. So uh, this is the typical HTML input element being defined here. Note how we define the label for this element. Now, down below, we have a third label class with the item, and this contains a button. This is the button which will trigger the submission of the form. So that's why this button has the class button, button block, button positive. So uh, the this button is blue in color and with the type submit. So which means that when this button is clicked, the form will be submitted. And the submission of the form will cause the do login function to be called in my controller. So this button is defined with the text as login. So that's what you see being shown in the login model on the screen. Now, let's see how this is actually created in JavaScript. To, uh, to show and hide the model, and then also receive the information when the model form is submitted. To help us understand the JavaScript support for the login model, you see that 
this is controlled by the app control controller which is defined in the controllers.js file that we have already created earlier so this controller contains this um, um, controller named app control and this takes functions with parameter scope and note the second parameter here which is dollar ionic model this ionic model is a service that is injected into this controller in addition a third service called the timeout is injected we will see the use of the timeout in a short while now how do we create this model now when we created the template you saw the use of the login data javascript object there and then we tied the username and the password property of the login data to the form input elements so to help us to do that inside this controller we have defined this uh, form element called login data later on i will be creating another form for reservation so that's why i have also defined another variable here called as reservation javascript variable called reservation and set it to an empty javascript object here i'm going to make use of both of these um, in defining and handling the model so how do we go about creating a model in ionic to create the login model in ionic remember that we have already defined the template in the login.html file so to create an ionic model we use the ionic model service here and then we invoke this ionic model service with the method from template url and this takes the parameter the first parameter specifies the templates uh, slash login.html so this is the login html template that we created for this model here so that's the first parameter that is supplied to this ionic model from template url the second parameter specifies um, how you handle the model so look at how this part is defined here this function here says scope variable is set to scope and then it says then so when this um, from template url method is called then on the return the second parameter then it says function model scope dot model equal to model so here i am specifying the model variable which is attached to the scope and equated it to the model that i just created using the from template url of the ionic model so this is how you create a model in ionic next we saw the use of the close login function and also the do login function let's look at how these javascript functions are implemented next now that we have the model variable already on the scope we can make use of the model variable and then call functions of the model variable in order to show and hide the model so to uh, to define those note how we define the close login function here so the close login function is defined on the scope and defined as when the function is invoked it says scope model height so we are calling the hide function of the model so this allows us to hide the model here if you need to show the model we say scope login function and scope model show we will see the use of this login function in the um, menu dot htm uh, or rather sidebar dot html file there i'll show that to you in a short while so this login function when invoked will show the model the last function that we saw being used in the definition in the model template was the do login function so what does the do login function do in this case inside the do login function you should be handling the submission of the form so when the form uh, button is clicked this function is going to be invoked so inside there you should handle the processing of the form so this is where you would send off the um, the request to the server in order to process the 
form information that the user submitted. So right now, we don't have a server set up for handling the, the login for the user. So that's why I'm simply doing a console log here to indicate that the login um, form was submitted. In addition, I am using the timeout service that is available within Angular to, uh, to introduce a short timeout period before which the model is automatically closed. So when you hit on the login button in your um, form, then this timeout function that I've defined here simulates the server-side processing on your behalf. So this will introduce a short delay. In this case, the second parameter, which is 1000, means 1000 milliseconds. After about a second, the model will be automatically dismissed because inside this timeout, we are calling this function with the close login function being called here. So the close login function will cause the um, model to be dismissed. So this is how we handle the login model in our uh, code here. Now, uh, this login model is invoked by clicking on the login item in the sidebar. So let's look at how this is defined in sidebar. So moving to sidebar.html, if you go down in the sidebar, in the side menu, you would notice that for the login, the ion item specified here says ion item menu close ng click login. And this is what is defined with the uh, text uh, as login here. So this is shown in the menu items in my sidebar. So when the login is clicked, then this will result in a call to the login functions, which we just saw earlier in the um, controllers.js file inside my app control. So this is how the model is invoked. So that's the reason why when you click on the login um, in the sidebar menu, then the login model is being displayed. Now that we have learned a little bit about how models and forms are handled in Ionic, let's now go ahead and create another model and form to help us to consolidate our understanding of Ionic's models and forms. Now, we are going to create a form that enables the user to reserve a table at the restaurant. So we will create the reserve uh, table model and also the corresponding template with the form that enables the user to submit information for reserving the table. Note that in this case, I will no longer be expecting the user to submit the username and password because when the user logs into the app using the login model, the user's information is already captured there. So when the user submits the reserve button, we already know which user is submitting that button. So on the server side, you will be easily able to handle the reservation on behalf of this user. Let's look at how we go about creating that form. So to create a reserve table form, the first thing that we will do is since we are already here in the sidebar.html, let me introduce a, another uh, menu item here uh, into my sidebar menu and then call it reserve table. Here you see that I have now introduced another ion item with the menu close and ng click equal to reserve, meaning that I must implement the reserve function inside my app control controller. And note the label that I have given here as reserve table. So this will introduce another item into my um, sidebar menu called reserve table. So now that we have introduced this here, let's create the template for the reserve table model. And then finally, we will go into the controllers.js file and then 
create the um, the JavaScript code for handling the reserve table model. Let's now create a template for the reserve table model. So to do that, go to uh, your uh, right side in the templates folder, just click, right click and say new file if you're using brackets or if you're using another editor, find a way of creating a new file there named reserve.html. I have already created the reserve.html file for you here. So let's open the reserve.html file here. Now inside this reserve.html file, I'm going to define the template for my reserve table model. So to create the template for the model, the first thing that we need to do is to define the ion model view. So let me introduce that code into reserve table. So I have ion model view introduced into the reserve table. Now, this model view would contain a header and the content. So let me add in the header first, and then we'll look at what the header contains, and then we will add in the content. So here, I have introduced the ion header bar here with the h1 class title as reserve table. So this is very similar to what you saw with the login uh, model uh, template earlier. And then the second one says div class buttons and the button class close reserve with the, with the ng click as close reserve, meaning that when this button is clicked, the reserve model will be closed. So which means that I must implement the close reserve function in my app control controller. Now, the next step is to introduce the content. So I have added the ion content tag in here. So this ion content tag will contain the form for my reserve table function. So let's add in the form step by step. So our first step in adding in the form is to create the form tag with the ID reserve form and the name reserve form. And then I specify ng submit do reserve, which means that the do reserve should be implemented in my app controller. Next, let me introduce my first element into the form. The first element that I introduce in the form should be inside a div class list, just as we saw for the login model. So you have a div class list and the first label class item, item input, item select. So the item select means that this is a select um, input element for my form here. So inside here, I am going to include a select form element. So the first one, it says span class input label number of guests. And then below that, you see me specifying select ng model reservation dot num guests. Reservation, meaning that there must be a JavaScript variable named reservation in my app control. We already saw that we introduced an empty JavaScript variable there named reservation earlier. So the num guests property of the reservation JavaScript object is going to be set to be a two-way data model binded with this select statement here. So inside the select, you see me defining the option as ng repeat n in one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is, I am using the ng repeat over this collection of numbers, one to six. And this is what I use to define the number of guests here. So in here, you can see me using the expression n and um, specifying the number of guests here. And uh, also the n inside the option here. So the value is tied to n and then the um, option being defined here. So this helps me to collect uh, to construct the select statement in there. This allows me to specify the number of guests from one to six. The next item to be added in 
is whether the user prefers the smoking or the non-smoking section of my restaurant. This I add in using the toggle that is part of the Ionix form support. So to do that, I define a list with the class item, item toggle, and then I specify smoking, question mark, and inside there, I specify a label with the class toggle, toggle assertive. Assertive meaning it is going to be displayed in red color. This toggle is displayed as a switch on the screen. And you will see that in a short while when we look at the model's uh, final uh, structure there. And then in here, I will specify the input as a checkbox type checkbox and the ng model tied to reservation dot smoking and this will be uh, defined as the class track and class handle so using these two i will create the the switch on the screen which you will see in a short while so a toggle in ionic is specified using the class dev class track and inside that, you specify div class handle. So this adds in the smoking um, selection for the user. Now, we need to specify the date and time. So to add the date and time, I specify two uh, elements here. So the label item input and span class input label date and the input type is date, which I tie to ng model reservation dot date. Similarly, the second one says label class item item input span class input label as time, and then the input uh, form itself input type as time, and the ng model reservation dot time, and the name, the minimum and the maximum value is specified, meaning that. The minimum value should be 11 a.m. and the maximum value should be 9 p.m. So which means that this restaurant accepts reservations starting from 11 a.m. until 9 p.m. After that, anything else is invalid. So in the time field, you can only type between 11 a.m. and 9 p.m. So if your form is correctly handled, then and your browser supports these date and time HTML inputs, then it should work correctly. Fortunately, both in iOS and Android, these two are supported appropriately. So this login, um, or rather this uh, reserve table with this date and time will result in the display of depending on whether you're using an iOS device or an, or an Android device, it will allow you to select the date and time using an appropriate widget on your mobile device. If you use this in your standard browser, as we will see, you won't see much difference on the screen there. But if you use it on the real device, later on, we will see how we can deploy our application to your real device. Mm -hmm. Then these form elements should work correctly, enabling you to select the date and time for the reservation. So now that we have created the template, the last thing that we need to add is the button, which when clicked will result in the form being submitted. So here I have defined the button uh, with the type submit and with the label reserve. So this button will be displayed in your form. And when this button is clicked, the because we have defined the ng submit attribute of my form as do calling the function do reserve the do reserve function that is implemented in my app controller will be called when this form is submitted now the last thing that we need to do is to go into our controller and then introduce the appropriate code in order to show and hide this model and handle the form submission from this reserve table model. Switching back to the controllers.js file, inside the app control controller, we are now going to handle the model 
corresponding to the reserve table. So to do that, let me first create the ionic model. So you can see that I have added in the code says ionic model from template URL. And I specify the templates dot res slash reserve dot HTML. We have just created the reserve dot HTML template file, which contains the form. And so the code here follows the exact way uh, similar to the code that we used for the login model. So here I say scope reserve form equal to model. Now I need a close reserve and uh, the reserve and also do reserve functions here. So let's implement those three functions next. So the close reserve function is implemented by calling reserve form dot hide in order to hide the reservation form or reservation model. The reserve form is uh, shown by defining this reserve function here as reserve form dot show. So this will, uh, when, the, when this uh, is clicked in the uh, sidebar, then the reserve model will be shown on the screen. And the last function to be implemented is the do reserve function. So you, you saw that the form in the reserve um, dot HTML template has been tied to the do reserve function through the ng submit. So inside the do reserve function, we need to handle the form submission. Right now, I'm just simply simulating that by doing a console log of the reservation um, JavaScript object and then simulating the processing by using a simple timeout here. Later on, when we develop the server side support, we are going to tie this in into the server side and then enable the submission of the form to the server in order to be processed. So with this addition, we have completed the changes that we need for using the reserve table model. So now let's go ahead and look at the resulting app in our browser. Going to our browser where we are showing the resulting application, you can now click on the navigation and you see the reserve table option in the sidebar menu. So let's click on the reserve table option and then you can see that the reserve table button, uh, reserve table model is being displayed on the screen here. So you can select the number of guests Say, uh, for example, we can select the number of guests as four. You can now see the use of the toggle in the second form field here. So you can, if you want to, you can click on the toggle to, to say yes to sm the smoking section or no uh, if you do not select the toggle. Okay. And the date and the time needs to be inputted here. So we can say, And then when you click on the reserve button, then this reservation form is going to be submitted. And the reservation form is uh, model is dismissed at this point. So with this, we have seen how we can make use of Ionic's model and forms in order to define these models and forms in Ionic to enable user to submit information. With this, we complete this exercise. In this exercise, we learned about how to create an Ionic form, how to make use of the various form elements that Ionic supports, and also we saw the use of the Ionic support for models and how we can show and hide models in our application.